Farmer Tom here. Today on the Farmer Tom cast, on our ongoing series, Heroes of the Green, we have Brenda Thomas from Southern Oregon. How's it going today, Brenda? Great, Tom. How are you? Good. Can you uh, tell the world who Brenda Thomas is? Um, well, I actually moved to Oregon in 1998, and it had already been, or it was just at the beginning end of being legalized when we first moved up here. I worked for a coin company in Vegas when we moved up here in August of 98. Um, my partner, who's now my wife, um, has had, had had six back surgeries and is caged pretty much throughout her whole entire back. So someone had told us about the program and we went through uh, Southern Oregon. Uh, it was then so hemp <laughs> to get her card and I was offered a job through there with Brent. So that's how I got started working in the industry to get cards for patients and starting to advocate. After um, I quit with Brent, I opened an office in Rogue River. I actually um, had got recommended to a doctor by Rick Moss of Rick's Monster Grow. And so the doctor told me, yes, we opened an office in Rogue River. Unfortunately, that office wanted to do things illegally and wanted me to sell when it wasn't legal yet. So I quit. And the doctor came with me and I opened my uh, clinic at THCF in Grants Pass in probably 2001, 2002. Um, things were going pretty good. We had great cards. We had numbers. It was like thousands of growers. I probably signed up over 7,000 growers in Josephine County alone. Um, things were going great with our program then. We didn't have all the, the restrictions. We didn't have the recreational drama. The program is running really smooth. Um, I'm actually one that voted no on recreational because it was attached to the Liquor Commission. That was the only reason I voted no on it. I ended up getting raided in 2009. Some a gentleman that was staying on our property that was helping us with our grow had sold to a person that did not have a card. They got pulled over. Well, it turns out that guy that was growing was related to a DA in Washington County, his brother. So they knew how to run the system. So they blamed everything on me. And I did spend, uh, I was sentenced to 16 months in prison. I did spend 10 months in prison. I did appeal that decision and I won, unfortunately, after I was released. <laughs> but I um, won on the judge abusing his discretion. They railroaded my whole trial just because they wanted to make an example out of me and I would not take their plea. So I did get all my property back. I got all my money back. Um, I went to the local paper and made them do a story to clear my name. Um, I figured at that point they had no problem ruining my name, so they should have no problem clearing my name. <laughs> um, so, I mean, they wouldn't even let my time cards in as proof that I wasn't even on site when, when the whole thing happened. But a big part of my fight then was because I was on parole and I was a medical patient they would not allow me to use my medicine. So I did a lot of advocating for patients that are on parole or probation to still be able to use their medicine as long as they do have a card. Um, I am currently with Compassionate Oregon. As you well know, they're one of the only groups left in Oregon that still fights for patients' rights. Um, we're working on some very big legislative moves for 2023, so please check out the Compassionate Oregon website. We are trying to get rid of OMMP and the OLCC. Um, we're going to try to keep OHP for no other reason but to process the cards and the payments. Um, so at this time, what I do still is run cards. I get I have a medical marijuana clinic. We do medical marijuana cards. If I had to depend on the card income alone at this time, my business would fail because of the lack of patients, because of the recreational. Um, because of metric, I have 30 metric accounts because metric is so confusing for everybody. And um, so I have 30 accounts where I'm helping patients with metric and I, I charge a monthly fee for that. Um, I really honestly believe that at the time they legalized recreational that they should have allowed our medical growers that were already growing for patients to become the growers for recreational instead of letting in all these big out of town money makers. I think they should have used our medical growers and I'm still fighting for that. I'm actually going to be reaching out to Lily Morgan, who used to be a commissioner in Josephine County and is now a state rep to discuss some things with her because I really believe our medical growers should be the ones 
growing for recreational. Um, I see them destroy all these farms, and we have a lot in southern Oregon because of the cartels. But they're taking good medicine that's already been trimmed and bucketed and burning it and throwing it away, when I believe they should be giving that to dispensaries to give to patients for free. In my mind, patients should get free medicine. So that's where I'm at now. We're, we're doing a lot of um, campaigning for 2023. And the biggest thing anybody can do to help is check out Compassionate Oregon and get behind us because we need voices. We need people that are willing to go to the legislator, talk to the legislatures, stand up there, commit to what you feel and let them know how, how we believe it should be. So can you dig in a little deeper about your initiatives that you want to be passed at the state level? Um, at state level, we're working on removing OMMP, uh, removing OLCC, because they haven't been able to prove that the out-of-state arrests have been from legal patients. They may have one or two. I'm not going to say they have none. I have no proof of that, but the majority are not. So why are they making us report? I really believe patients should not have to pay for cards. They shouldn't have to renew cards. They shouldn't have to pay for medicine. If they're going to have the recreational, that should take care of our patients. So that's what I'm going to be fighting for in 2023. All right. So tell us about how growers in Southern Oregon have been affected by legalization in the state. Um, Southern Oregon, especially because we have a mass amount of growers down here because we are part of the Emerald Triangle. We went from, I can't even imagine how many growers. We're probably down to a f maybe a few couple thousand now at the most. Um, I did used to have 40 metric accounts. I lost 10 of them when they started threatening to take people's properties and et cetera. So landlords wouldn't re-sign leases. Um, so I, I lost growers, patients lost growers. That's eight patients per grower. If I lose 10 growers, that's 80 patients that just lost medicine. So, and it really breaks my heart. 